Stay tuned for two all-new hours of fun with Sansa bloopers and great commercials. Sunday Night at the Movies returns next week with The Blue Lagoon. Hello. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm Alan King, and uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Eddie Arnold. Thank you, Alan. Eddie and I will be co-hosts for the premier craft show. What am I, a pole? <laughs> I wish I was a dog. <laughs> ah, we've got a mouse, but Lulu, but Lulu, she The men and women of the Fleet Reserve say they hope this is a tradition that can continue for a long time, because they say it's the least they can do for their shipmates who get it. From Hollywood, the all-new TV censored bloopers number four. Hosted by Dick Clark. With guest stars William Shatner and Mary Lou Henner. And special appearances by Joe Campanella, Melanie Chartoff, and Snoopy Sayers. And featuring the unplanned plugs and bloopers of Don Adams, Steve Allen, Lloyd Bridges, Bill Burrard, Dick Cavett, Mike Connors. Tim Conway, Dom DeLuise, Robert De Niro, Danny DeVito, Jeff Edwards, Sally Field, Peter Graves, Pat Harrington, Robert Hayes, Judd Hirsch, Alan King, Groucho Marx, Leslie Nielsen, Burt Reynolds, Don Rickles, Barbara Stanwyck, Fred Travelina, Robert Wagner, Lawrence Welch, and many more of your favorite stars. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of TV Censored Bloopers, Dick Clark. Welcome to our fourth all-new edition of TV Censored Bloopers, the show that is making a household word. Now, tonight, thanks to your overwhelming response to Bloopers 1, 2, and 3, we've got a brand-new collection of uh, unplanned mishaps for you from your favorite television shows and movies and things like that. We've got blown dialogue, and we've got giggles, and we've got trips and slips, and all sorts of forgotten lines that, happily for us, were not forgotten, because somebody along the line, either a star or producer or somebody, remembered to save them so that we could share them with you tonight. Now, for instance, we've got bloopers from the golden age of TV. Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000, and if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. <laughs> well, we've got bloopers from motion pictures. Here's Robert De Niro on location for the movie The King of Comedy. Now, there's a little lady who didn't realize she walked right into the middle of a movie who was being made. She was just a... You know, an admiring fan who sees that opportunity to say hello. I just want to say hello and goodbye. That's all right. Said, say hello. Said, say, say goodbye. Say hello. Thank you. Uh, that's nice to be. The 18th of the I should have a good Oh, yeah, you a kiss. We've got bloopers from modern drama. You know, actors right, filming on location face many hazards uh, weather, fatigue, insects. Uh, and uh, uh, other things. Porter, I am the fair lady, gives way to the putrid stink of self-interest. You know what I mean here? Thinking only of number one. <laughs> well, that's just a small sample of what we have in store for you, so stay with us. We'll be right back with more TV Censored Bloopers number four. <laughs> Portions of this program are being brought to you by Timex. Remember, durability, beauty, and great design aren't expensive, just rare. Timex, we make technology beautiful. Welcome to the Timex freeze test. I'm going to freeze this quartz analog Timex in this liquid nitrogen at 320 below. How cold is it? Watch this carnation. 
Baby, that's cold. Will our Timex Quartz analog work? I knew it would. Durability, beauty, and great design aren't expensive, just rare. So wear a Timex, because Timex makes technology beautiful. How am I doing, John? Cameron Swayze. When you touch me, it's so appealing. I'm a child again, walking in the rain. Ooh, ooh I love the feeling. Cooling, soothing. That's the feeling of soft spring rain. The feeling you get from the wonderfully natural moisture in Rain Tree. Oh, I love the feeling. So if you're like me, I'm sure you've run across signs that read, uh, oh, not in service at this time or closed for repairs. Well, here's some outtakes we call dialogue flubs and fluffs. Now, if you were to post a sign on the performers, it might read, mouth temporarily out of order. New Center 7 and PM Magazine. Boy, the Eastern Islands get to watch the best on KWWL. New Center foo poo. I'm in air pollution. How about me, Dad? Air pollution gets down this list throwing sign. <laughs> That's the last time, Harry. Put your arms at your sides, and I'm going to blow. <laughs> this happens to be the end of your little kidnapping operation. Kidnapping? <laughs> Today, Dr. Timothy Johnson has some first aid tits, tips as he continues his series of summer hazards. You know, many American actors appear in foreign films. Now, if they don't speak the language, they have to learn it, uh, what do they call it, phonetically. Now, in this scene, Robert Wagner has to speak German. He's really pleased. He's finally learned his lines and gotten them out after a lot of takes. Da drüben an der Berg sind zwei Männer mit einem kleinen Lastwagen vorgeheifert und haben aber geschickt nicht wirklich an der Bank zu schaffen, zu mutschen. Da drüben, welche Bank ist das denn? Die Park, die Parkbank im Englischen Garten. Was gut, ja? You know, I think it was Dr. Doolittle whose main ambition in life was to uh, talk to the animals. Well, here's some animals that even Dr. Doolittle would agree were certainly the talk of the town. And here's a man who knows how to handle animals, Bill Burrard. Oh, this playful fellow has the dog. He's 200 pounds of timber. You old rascal, you. But you know, he's like a dog in one way. At mealtime, he wants meat. Your dog really wolfed down his dinner. She's all the right? Yes, she's a, gonna be fine. I, I tell her the truth. I need air. No, she, she got the worst of breath. Oh, she, come on, take it easy. I'm a doctor. Come on, get out of here. No, she's a hot color you. She's something else. And her nose is cold. Wait, wait. Oh. Oh. Yes. Why don't we uh, just keep driving to Texas and you give her an examination of the truck? <laughs> you know, I tell you. Oh. Yes. I'm missing my wife. It's so bad. No commercials. I always have a hard time keeping the dog away from the Alpo. It's not time yet. You can't eat that yet. Wait till it's your turn. Uh, this is Alpo beef. It's beef chunks and meat byproducts fortified with enough vitamins and minerals to give your dog a complete and balanced diet. If you're using a dog food that looks meaty or costs about the same as Alpo, check the ingredients. If they say things like cracked barley and wheat flour, you'll know it's got cereal. But here... Oh, it's not time yet. Here, Alpo here is beef chunks and meat byproducts, not a speck of cereal. You get all the meat you pay for with Alpo. I can't torture this dog any longer. A complete and balanced diet. Now, that commercial was seen live in the early days of the Dick Cavett show. Now, Here's a scene from the award-winning series, Taxi, that will never be seen anywhere, except here. Elaine. I know. Worst part is I didn't even get dinner out of it. <laughs> Usually when a guy dumps me, he takes me to a nice place. Hey, I tell you what, let's do. I'll get the guys together and we'll go, uh, we'll go to some, uh, you know, funny-looking joint, which is uh, around the corner, and have a uh, couple of beers, and then we'll all jump on top of you. And everything. One of the stars of the hit series, Taxi, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mary Lou Henner. Uh, 
is so nice to have you here. Of course. How long has Taxi been on the air? Uh, we're just starting our fifth year. I know. It's I wonderful. saw you nine trillion years ago. In, oh. oh, no. You're not that old. But saw you in Greece, yes. not in the musical. <laughs> you know, actors get a little punchy after a show runs a long time. You're always yeah. playing jokes on each other. There, years and years ago, somebody mailed me something in the mail. I told you that story before the oh, show. Yes. You said they did something similar in Greece. Well, well, we had just started on the road at the time, and we were working in Boston. That's where the show, the national company, opened. And at the show that night, one of the guys has to take a tuna fish sandwich out of his lunch bag. Well, we put a lobster in instead. <laughs> so he reaches in, and he takes this lobster. And what's he supposed to say? He's supposed to say, oh, all I got is a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> You got a live lobster. lobster. Right, a lobster. What did he do? So he, like, you know, he carried it with him for a while on the show. And then there's the scene where we all have to go back to our lockers. So he threw it in his locker, right? Saturday night, we all, you know, finished the show and everything. Monday night, because Sunday, Sunday don't was, play. was our day off. Monday night, we walk in, everybody goes, What's in the theater? Oh my God. <laughs> the lobster came the back lobster. to home. Now, let, let me turn to Taxi. You are the only female member of the cast. Now, working with all of those guys, does it. Um, present any problems well they first of all know that i love to laugh i mean things that are funny to me i just i just have to go i mean so sometimes when i have uh, something to do especially with someone like danny let me throw names of the cast and tell me the first thing that comes to mind okay uh judd hirsch judd hirsch judd hirsch is intense maniac double talker fantastic actor but double talker oh, now, say no more watch this <laughs> He's already got parents. I didn't say there wouldn't be problems. But Jim, his parents are def def. <laughs> but Jim, his parents are desperately trying to find him. They're camped out at the police station right now. The cops just called me and asked if there's any of us ever seen him. Come in here. My love life. Get the f out of here. <laughs> I have no right being here. I, I don't even want to be here. In fact, it'll probably be doing new me no but you go. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Jump to Tony Danza first. Okay. What, Tony, Tony Danza. Oh, Tony is um he's wild, crazy, he's a real giggler, and he he get, he gets like stuck on one thing and then can't get off of it. Funny many times. you should mention. I think, I think we have just the thing. Take a look. That's what I think too. A girl I used to date once said, <laughs> "You do have the face for it." That's what I think too. A girl I once dated said, "I was an Italian Sylvester Stallone." Yeah, I think the world is waiting for one of those. Too. A girl I once dated said, I was an Italian Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the world is waiting for one of those. <laughs> this is a tough scene, guys. I'm telling the truth. Is it Memorex or is it Tony? <laughs> All right, now, uh, lastly, Danny DeVito. Oh, Danny. Well, most people don't know this about Danny, but Danny is, Danny's almost a saint. I mean, he's really one of the loveliest, sweetest people it's ever. Not like he's the like, character? No, nothing like the character. So, I don't know whether it's just that he gets to be so mean every, you know, once a week that he <laughs> gets it all out of his system or what. But he's really, he's, he's a vegetarian, he's into yoga, he's, he's almost like a guru of the, group, of the group. And he also is very much in control many times. I mean, he's very spontaneous and everything, but there was one time that he was a blithering idiot. When Maxie started, when Maxie, when Maxie started driving, the George Washington Bridge was dental work. <laughs> now, look, Max, look at it in this way. You're not really old. You're not really old. You're just middle-aged. <laughs> oh, uh, breaking up. Watch the very talented character actor Louis Gus struggle to maintain well, look, his look composure. The man on the right. <laughs> look at it in this way, Max. You're not really old. <laughs> yeah.
It's a shambles. The more he did it, the harder it got. Did that ever get in the show? No, and I felt so bad for the actor, too, because Danny could never get through that whole bit, you know. There is a piece of tape here that involves the two of you where he whispers something to you, and yes. the reaction is, what is the story there? Well, it was a show about uh, Danny's um, making a... Um, what is that called? A fallout shelter in the garage. And so he's only invited a few of us from the garage to join his little group. And he wants me to know that when it's my turn and I come knocking on the door that, that I can be part of the group and he wants to tell me the password. So all week he had to whisper something in my ear. He'd say the loveliest, sweetest things to me, you know. Well, Friday night when it came time to shoot. <laughs> when the day comes, you'll be knocking on that door when you're up to your pretty dimpled cheeks in rubble. <laughs> and I'll be in here waiting. Just so we know that it's you. Here's the password. <laughs> Here's the password. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> but memorable. <laughs> Is the password. <laughs> That's disgusting. But memorable. What, what did he say? Dick, I can tell you on the air. Let, let me take a guess. Was it? <laughs> oh, That's disgusting. Ah, oh, but memorable. <laughs> but the ear here. Mary Lou Henner, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Joy, you're sorry. Sure. We'll see you on Taxi. <laughs> We'll be right back with some falls and giggles that'll make you giggle. Don't go away. Soup is a harvest of nerves. How did you get so wet? I'm not very wet. I'm not very wet. Go ahead and eat your soup while it's nice and hot. It's your favorite Campbell's tomato. You eat all that soup, and maybe you'll be okay. You're more likely to get sick when your resistance is down. A balanced diet that includes nutritious foods like Campbell's soup can help keep your resistance up. Mom. Mm-hmm. Do you still love me anymore? Oh. <laughs> soup is good food. Only from Chevrolet. Only until November 15th on both cars and trucks. Get a round-trip ticket for two on Eastern Airlines. Good for a full year. When you buy or order one of these new 1982 or 83 Chevrolets by November 15th, fly across the country to visit relatives or give the round-trip ticket for two as a gift. Plus, on new 82 models only, get 10.9% financing that can save you hundreds of dollars in financing costs. It's the best time to shop for a Chevy in the past 10 years. Mr. Hill, I want my money back. None of these stick deodorants stop wetness. So they aren't made to. But Arid Solid fights wetness ordinary sticks can't. It's new. Arid Solid? Look, these sticks say deodorant, not antiperspirant, because they contain nothing to stop wetness. But new Arid Solid antiperspirant fights wetness and odor with the most powerful anti-wetness ingredient. Arid fights wetness and odor. That's for me. New Arid Extra Dry Solid fights wetness ordinary deodorant sticks can't. Robert Urich is gavelin. He likes nothing better than hanging out at the beach, playing in the sun. Trouble is, he used to be a big-time secret agent. That makes him sort of popular. Women always wanting to be rescued. Bad guys dropping in at all hours. It's enough to ruin a guy's day. Catch the adventures of the one and only gavelin Tuesday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. St. Elsewhere is compelling. If you don't get treatment, you're not going to live out the year. There's no big loss. St. Elsewhere is exquisite. The greatest aphrodisiac in the history of man is high heels. Below me. That ranks second. St. Elsewhere is different. I'm the only one who could have saved his life. St. Elsewhere. See it for yourself. Tuesday. It's all right, Judy. Here, come on. Come on. I squeezed your eyes. 
You know, an actor's job really isn't easy on the set. He's a very busy person. He's got lines to remember and actions to act and emotions to emote. It's no wonder that occasionally the actors trip up. And uh, here are some of those trips. This is a daytime drama called The Doctors. Ben Thomas is a, is a very fine actor. He's a, a powerful leading man, but not necessarily a strong leading man. <laughs> you know, in order for a television or movie fight scene to look realistic, it has to be very carefully staged and choreographed. Now, remember the late night comedy series uh, Fridays? Well, Melanie Chartoff recalls how she and Mary Edith Burrell, two very experienced actresses, almost got the fight technique down. <laughs> well, as you know, Dick, in live television, not everything always goes as it's planned to go. And Mary Edith Burrell and myself had worked out a wonderful little stage fight in preparation for this sketch with a stuntman. And in the staged fight, uh, she was to take a right cut to just miss my jaw, and I was going to throw back my head and then do a, a pratfall flip over onto the mat and get up and say, what did you do that for? Well, when it came time for the live show, in our zeal to make it look as realistic as possible, something went wrong, and, well, it came out something like this. Here. Here, give me something to do. Mother, why don't you just sit and relax, dear? Here, here. Let me spray. I'm good at spraying. <laughs> it's an instant replay of that in slow motion. In any case, I have Mary Edith Burrell to thank for this new tooth and my new smile. Thanks, Mary Edith. Now here's one of America's best love music makers, Lawrence Welk. And Mr. Welk gets the notes out beautifully, but the words... Well, sometimes the words give them trouble. Cowboy star Gene Audra introduced the song Tumbling Lullaby. <laughs> tumbling with tumbleweeds. Tumbling tumbleweeds. <laughs> Champagne music maker Lawrence Welk. You know, his voice is one of the most imitated by impressionists and mimics of all of the show business personalities. Now, watch comedians Fred Travelina and Pat Harrington try to get through this sketch in which they play Lawrence Welk's fictional brothers. What we want to know is why that great musical trio, the Welk Brothers, broke up. Sonia Hennis Tutu. <laughs> you know about the trio? The Dixie Tidlers? Did you ever <laughs> Sorry about that, Louis. Uh, uh, it sucks me funny, Sonia Hennis. <laughs> Sonia Hennis Tutu. You know about the trio. The Dixie Dinlong. Did you ever hear us play? Well, no, not personally. The I... biggest. <laughs> Sonia Hennis Tutu. You know about the trio. The Dixie Dinlong. Did you ever hear us play? No, I, I, I didn't actually hear you. The biggest. <laughs> you can do. Oh, <laughs> See, they can cut it together if anything works. Anything. <laughs> Listen, oh, Bill, I can do both parts. Now, here's a scene from the early days of live television. It's a children's show called Mr. Wishbone. Now, keep in mind, it's the 1960s. And in those days, words that are really very innocent today were taboo then. Uh, Mr. Wishbone finds that out when his friend Bart says the word diarrhea. Oh, excuse me, Bart. You said very little milk? Very little milk for... Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yes, because it tends to give them diarrhea, so uh, rather than... Wasn't I supposed to say that? <laughs> what, now, what did you call that cat, Bart? What do you mean? <laughs> What's your name again, Bart? 
<laughs> Doesn't the kitten have a name? What would say, Bart? It's hard to believe that the mere mention of one word. Bart can't get it together. I'll let you know. What kind of thing is I'll let you name them? I'll let you <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> you know, Jeff Edwards is a very, very capable game show host, but watch a simple thing like a contestant's hat totally destroy his concentration. As you know, you can go on winning and winning just as long as you keep picking the mini treasure box with a pop-up surprise. Give me the giggles, Nancy. In just a moment, you're going to walk up there behind us. You're going to choose a package, and that package could represent anything. <laughs> I don't know why I have the giggles, but I have the giggles. That package, you don't, right? No. Okay. That package could represent anything from a real clunk to a jackpot of prizes, or... <laughs> I'm sorry. Or it could be our grand prize of $50,000. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. Fifty thousand dollars in cash. But before you make your choice, we're going to show you some of the surprises. Don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, do this in church. Could happen to anybody. You know, people ask me, where do all these bloopers come from? Well, many of them come from the stars themselves. I'll be uh, or at a party or a business meeting or whatever, and somebody would come up to me and say, you got to find the scene where so-and-so and I are doing such and such. It's hilarious. For instance, Joe Campanella, who was in the long-running series Mannix with Mike Connors, told me about an incident that happened to him and to Mike and a car. <laughs> God. Oh, that was, that was one of many incidents that we had on the show. Oh, you know, we're professional actors. We're sitting there, ready to list, breezing along. There's a fan blowing and everything else like that. And the guy goes like this, which means stop. And we do the reaction. We get out of the car, and there's a big laugh. We kind of look around like, what happened? We turn around, and there's the screen still running. <laughs> the whole experience of working with Mike Connors was, was marvelous. And there were many marvelous, funny things that happened. You can start work. You can start working up an hour. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Joe. You've gotten away with it so often, you're beginning to think you're something special that you can get away with anything. Oh, not George. Now, what makes this client so unusual? Hmm? And what makes you think the department can't protect her? <laughs> Excuse me. May I help you? Well, maybe. Uh, I'm looking for. Who am I looking for? <laughs> Maybe he could have told us what was in that miracle water before uh, we had an analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mike. And coming up next year, guests are William Shatner and some late-breaking news miscues. Stay tuned. Film in a minute. <laughs> From the edge of time comes the digital watch of tomorrow, today. The new Dress Digital by Timex. Incredibly thin digitals with a totally new technology. All push buttons are gone. Digital control is an amazing command bar. Discover the new, very beautiful, micro-thin Dress Digitals by Timex. Built and priced in the Timex tradition. Timex, we make technology beautiful. Calcan proudly introduces Crave. My kitty cat craves chicken. My kitty cat craves milk. My kitty cat craves tuna. So my kitty cat craves Crave. Yeah, my kitty cat craves Crave. New Crave dry cat food gets its taste from real chicken protein, real milk protein, and real tuna protein. Not just flavors, but real protein-rich foods cats crave. Crave, new from Calcan. Stay tuned for more TV Censored Bloopers number four. Next, they'll make you sing and break you up. They're the biggest little spectaculars in the world. With Ed McMahon and Mariette Hartley, the all-new television's greatest commercials. 
Tuesday, a young orphan girl is more than she seems. An heiress? But greedy kidnappers will steal her inheritance unless they're stopped by Father Murphy. There's something new in the air over Arizona. Easy country. Ease on down to the bottom of your music dial. 92 FM. On the road again. Country roads. Take me home. I want to sing you. on down to the bottom of your music dial. Easy Country does it. 92 FM. How do we make Denny's best-selling sandwich? We take tender, oven-roasted breast of turkey, tangy, sizzling bacon, plump, ripe tomatoes, and mellow Swiss cheese. Pile it on French bread, grill it to a golden brown, and serve it with French fries. Denny's Superbird Sandwich, on special this month for only $2.99, but only at Denny's, where you'll like our prices and you'll love our food. Did you have health problems? Watch Surviving 83 at 5, 6, and 10 p.m. on Channel 12. The biggest increase is coming in the freshman and sophomore classes. Over 7,600 students... Mm -hmm. You know, reporting the news live on television takes exacting skills and many hard hours of preparation. It takes scores of highly trained people. You've got people like uh, anchormen, reporters, editors, writers, technicians, and many, many more. Now, these people are professionals. Their job is complex. Where the news is concerned, there is no room for error. Well, maybe just a little. All kidding aside, this is a fast-paced business, and a reporter has to be able to work quickly, keep his or her cool, and get it right the first time. Do it one more time. You know, firemen are courageous. They're there when you need them. But uh, about the hose. <laughs> and even if your jaw is, right, is wired shut, uh, I think it's possible to, to nod your head yes or to shake your head no. <laughs> Sometimes the news is too true to be good. But... <laughs> Sometimes the news is too true to be good, but our job is to bring it to you. <laughs> Here we go. Are you ready? <clears throat> okay, here we go. This is it. <laughs> Sometimes the news is too true to be good, but our job is to bring it to you quickly and accurately. At New Center 8, we're meeting that responsibility. Should I do it again? <laughs> as soon as I start talking, you can start. Okay. Okay. Karate is a sport that requires a great deal of strength, concentration, and extreme precision. And if you have any doubts about that, let me introduce you to International Women's Karate Champion. <laughs> and speaking of water, there's a fireman's ball coming up in town, if you're not familiar with fireman's balls. <laughs> well, that's right, you can get familiar. <laughs> the cloth that I'm wearing is interlaced with pieces of iron. It's called a bulletproof vest. And for Metro police officers, it could save their lives. This morning, here at the gun range, they were demonstrated. To test the effectiveness, we'll fire a 22 caliber pistol into this vest. Damn. That hurt like hell. <laughs> it's time now for sports, and here are some sportscasters who are very good sports. I know people care about their sports here. We're a professional sports team, Tom Dean, Paul Thiem. White is behind the pink, but the yellow is on that side cushion. And for those of you in black and white, it's just behind the blue. <laughs> Alabama on top of things in the Southeastern Conference with a 15-2 and record in conference play, 22-3 and overall. Kentucky in second place, as it's been most of the year, 1-2 and two between those two teams. Tennessee and Auburn tied for third, followed by Vandy, Florida. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my favorite part of a newscast is the weather report. Now, lately, 
News programs have tried to sort of um, outweather each other with unique, amusing television, what they call special effects. Now, here are some classic examples of some unforecastable weather forecasts. Because nothing has happened. It is all just about the same as it was yesterday. And for the next five days, it's going to continue to be real nice, as a matter of fact. All right, let's have a look now. Around Ohio, and you did it again, guys. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. You pushed the wrong cotton picking button. Satellite 1 o'clock today shows the sunshine in Ohio, that Canadian high still doing its thing. But look to the east of there, you see clouds in Pennsylvania, West Virginia. And that is with an upper air disturbance that set off a few showers. Uh, the fly is on the monitor now. And this is the heavier cloud cover, the lighter that you can see on top of it. But of course, here in Central Texas, skies are fair. Well, we were going to the Texas map, but instead it came to us. So we'll go back to it, I guess. <laughs> April Fool's Day, obviously. You know, William Shatner is a very fine motion picture and television actor. He's currently known as T.J. Hooker. You also know him as the captain of the Starship Enterprise on Star Trek. Now, for years, this is a man who's mastered the highly scientific and technical jargon associated with space travel. Watch how those technological words just roll off his tongue with the greatest of ease. Hi, Tom. All right, Stryker, I'll bother you in a little half. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to a man who is in complete command of everything. Well, um, almost everything. One of the stars of the new movie, Airplane 2, the distinguished actor, Mr. William Shatner. your career for a lot of years. It started back in the days when things were live. and when I was dancing on American Bandstand. When you were a little boy. <laughs> was there ever... Somebody told me a piano story. I never saw it. Was it a live television show that this thing happened? Yeah. It was a murder mystery in the, in the last faltering days of live television. And, um, and I had to play the piano. The girl that I was going to kill was upstairs. And... Do you know how to play the piano? Uh, no. <laughs> Problem number one. There's some difficulties. And, uh, and so what they did was, behind the flat, they had a pianist with a similar piano. And as I came to the piano and looked upstairs and played the notes on a deadened piano. The yeah, piano was had dead. A blanket. Had a blanket on the notes, exactly, on the inside. This is live. This is There's live. There's no way to do it again. There's a pianist out there looking through a hole in the wall at the cue as I put my fingers down like that. So now we're on the air. 30 million people are watching. Maybe 40 by this time of television. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing's happening. I'm thinking, where is the penis? I thought, well, I'll have to vamp for some time here. So I went like that. The piano started playing. <laughs> No, from that moment on, it was a murder mystery. I was supposed to go stab her. They'd laugh. Well, speaking of stabbing, that brings up another. You had a little problem with a gun once. Remember that story? Oh, uh, well, that was, uh, yes. That was a bit of a problem. Key to a uh, murder mystery, another murder mystery, was um, the shooting of, uh, of uh, the other person. I forgot now whether it was a villain or not. Anyway, I was supposed to shoot the... I was supposed to get a, out of a book. I don't... I'll be right with you and I get a book out, and inside the book is the gun. Right. I take the gun out and I shoot this person who falls dead, and the, and the plot continues. This is again live? Yes. So I said, wait, wait just a moment. We're now 40 million people are watching. I've got the book. It's no gun. <laughs> he had to die. A variety of things flashed through my mind. Strangle him. Beat him. But I was near a bar, and I saw a corkscrew. <laughs> I took the corkscrew and I screwed him to death. Oh. <laughs> uh, so to speak. Now, in, the, in this uh, airplane thing, in the, the airplane two, the sequel, you play sort of a, a character similar to your uh, Star Trek uh, character. Uh, is that true? It, it's a manic, uh, a crazed version, yes. Oh, 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 oh. We'll go so far as to say. Well, I mean, your film stars are, are Lloyd Bridges and uh, Peter Graves and, and Chuck host, Connors. A host of, uh, of 
stellar stars. No uh, Robert Hayes, these are all very distinguished guys. They're not really known as, as comedians. Does no. this present any sort of uh, trouble getting comedy out of this group? Well, uh, I don't think so. I think that a serious actor has very has been trained to focus very closely on the material at hand, and nothing usually goes wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Hunter, didn't you uh, serve under over in the Air Force? Well, not directly. Technically, Dunn was under over, and I was under Dunn. So then, Dunn, you were over under Dunn. Under over, over. Exactly. Yeah. Dunn was over under, and I was over just sort of. So you see, both Dunn and I were under over, even though I was under Dunn. Yeah. And of course, everybody knows Elaine. Oh. <laughs> That up. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine. You know. <laughs> Ted, Elaine. Ted, please. Elaine, listen to Ted, me. Ted, we can't go on like this anymore. You don't understand. We have to go back. I understand perfectly. We've been through what? <laughs> Courage. My dedication, daring, pride, pluck, spirit, grit, metal, bravado, and. And G U T S guts. <laughs> I want all of you and your toes for this one. First, I need a computer estimate how long that ship can last after that bomb blows. Norton, give me a. <laughs> sure, that's, certain serious actors do make mistakes, but yeah. you, you will notice that there was nothing of me. Uh, Why was that? that? One take ship. One take chat. One take chat. One take chat. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to see the man who never makes mistakes. One take chat. <laughs> Billions of people are hanging on our every word, hoping and praying that you put this ship down on ground, safe ground, just as safe as it can be. In one piece. In one piece. I. What <laughs> oh, is that last line? Yeah. Hoping. Huh? Billions of people, billions of people, billions, billions. <laughs> down and down safe. We just looked into the radio communication satellite. But down and down safe. We have just looked into down and down safe. <laughs> Set her down, nice and slowly, whenever you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's upside down. <laughs> people up there, I'd say, let Ted Stryker go down on a molten piece of twisted mass of molten metal. <laughs> I think you've invented a new language. Well, it's not a new language, it's an old language. I learned it when I was out in space. So it's nice to have you back on ground. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. William Shatner. Thank you. <laughs> Next, some unforgettable lines that were forgotten and some props that fly. I'd rather do almost anything other than clean an oven. Does not fit into my schedule, except I have to make time to do it. Try this oven cleaner. Watch Mrs. Quake and I discover Easy Off Oven Cleaner. It's fast and easy. Terrific. It really came off easily. Wonderful. Do you like to know what it is? Yes, Easy Off. With Easy Off, it's no problem. I can fit it into my schedule and have a clean oven. Incredible. Easy Off makes oven cleaning easier. Lemon scented or regular with the anti-fume valve. All this commotion. What a headache. And my doctor said no aspirin. Take three. Take three? Yes. Anison 3. It's 100% aspirin free. I didn't know Anison 3 is aspirin free. I'll try it. Right. Anison 3 is 100% aspirin free and contains the most effective aspirin free pain reliever you can buy. How do you feel now? Headache's gone thanks to Anison 3. Maximum strength Anison 3. 100% aspirin free. Watch out. Who's that talking, Wizard of Odyssey? A voice! Odyssey 2's new voice module warning me of the dreaded Rathapilla in Casey's crazy chase. Run, hurry! I'm hurrying! Got you, Rathapilla. <laughs> Incredible. The voice and new voice games. Only from Odyssey 2, where the keyboard is the key to greater challenge. Buy Odyssey, get $82 worth of free games, including Quest for the Rings and Casey's Crazy Chase. Wednesday, join in the salute to America's veterans in a touching tribute to all the real people who have kept us free. Real people. Then on Facts of Life, Blair's new boyfriend creates a special problem for everyone. 
And when an old family friend makes a move on Valerie... He used to bathe you when you were a baby. I think he wants his old job back. It unravels all family ties. Man. I'll fight you till you bleed. Quincy faces off with a young coroner who's out to get him. Just watch us now, Wednesday on NBC. I'd like to make something very clear. There's no question about what my mother saw. But there's some question about what I'm going to say next. Well, when you were in school, did you ever have trouble memorizing a speech or a poem or an essay, something like that? I know I did. Usually they're only a few pages long. Did you know that a one-hour television script is about 100 pages long? Well, that's a lot for an actor to memorize. Well, here are some actors who have no trouble memorizing whole scripts. They just can't remember the next line. I wonder if Harris got through all right. Harris will get through if anybody can. You know what I wish? What? I wish I knew what the hell my next line is. <laughs> I guess we'll go back to doing what I do best. I guess we'll go back to doing what I do best. Show off. When do we get started? When do we get started? That's my line. When do we get started? That's my line. You oh. say whenever, whenever you like. Whenever you like. <laughs> so I keep going. This okay. is good stuff. Yeah, I like this. Steve, where are you, sweetheart? I'm down here, Jane. Darling, couldn't you have carpeted the kitchen before the gifts arrived? Oh, I'll be finished in a minute, dear, thanks to these old zeit clean and king cling <laughs> cling clang and clang. Oh, I have some onion dip. I wish... Oh, look at that. I don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. I, oh, 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 God. Oh. Wipe your mouth. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's uh, all of the... Um, um, well, don't, don't worry. Just rinse it off in the sink. Oh, you're kidding. I'm choking. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how your mind just goes blank? Now, in this scene from the hit series Fame, Valerie Landsberg and Carlo Imperato may have just set a record. Morning. Uh, I'm looking for the lady of the house. I'm here to inspect your plumbing. Did you bring your plumber's helper? I asked, but he was busy. Well, our plumbing's fine, honey. Hot water's hot and cold water's cold. Uh it's fine, honey. Hot water's hot and cold water's cold. I'm glad. <laughs> My plumbing's fine, honey. Hot water's hot and cold water's cold. <laughs> Did you bring your plumber's helper? I asked, but he was busy. <laughs> scary horror film the lights are low hold on to your seat you can't shoot us dead richard because we're already dead already dead already yeah. dead already dead you said that <laughs> all right chris let's have some answers Okay, Michael, let's have some answers. Now, Guard Edis, will you please open the safe? Guard Edis, there he comes. He will now dial the final digit in the combination and open the safe. And when he does that, Carolyn, I want you to reach in there, and there will be a wheel. And uh, Guard Edis, could you open the door, please? <laughs> Yeah. He lost. He forgot the combination. <laughs> it's been realized for a long time that sharks, primitive as they may be, are also highly adaptable. But it was not until this project in Nicaragua, <laughs> Nicaragua. <laughs> if you'd like to get a Michael Valbrecht original, you can get one at Neiman Marcus, Saks, Giorgio's of Beverly Hills, or um, <laughs> there's only three of them. <laughs> I couldn't make up another one up. <laughs> now, did you ever notice how things go wrong when you least expect them to? Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, you're late for work and your car won't start. 
or you sit down to watch the big game and the TV picture goes out or you turn on the shower and you get cold water. It gets you crazy, doesn't it? But we're going to see what happens when simple things like a prop don't work and the actor least expects it. Don't wait to order a shrimp cocktail. Open one. Uh-huh. Open one if you can. <laughs> Grant, she's not worth it. Here's a wonderful piece of stage business. Now, Sharon Acker, if she was a magician, couldn't pull this off if she tried. Watch. <laughs> You never figure things like that out. Well, I guess we'd better be going. We'll have a report for you, sir, as soon as possible. <laughs> Texas, where men live big, love big, and lie even bigger. <coughs> Texas. What? <laughs> Texas. Where men live big, love big, and lie even bigger. <laughs> Texas. How's it going in the booth? <laughs> you know, one of everybody's favorite kids' programs in the early 60s was the Zany Soupy Sales Show. Every child in the world watched that thing. Well, recently we heard about an incident that happened live on the show involving, uh, what would you say, an unexpected visitor to the set. So we asked Soupy to tell us just what happened. It happened in about 1960, 61, and I was doing the kids' show. And uh, I was supposed to be up front working with White Fang, the dog. <laughs> and I was supposed to be talking with him, and I would hear a, a scream, a, a sound effect of a woman screaming. And then I was to go to the door, and there was going to be a pair of women's shoes being pulled by cat gut, followed by a pair of men's shoes. And it would be a, a take from me into the camera, and they would go into a commercial. So anyway, so I get through, and I hear the woman scream. I went, great. And I go to the door, and I notice that the number two camera is swinging over to the right. And I said, oh, that's great. He's going to get a close-up of the shoes being pulled by and going to the door, and I opened the door, and everybody was in on it but me. There is what you're going to see now. There is a naked girl, and I mean, I went, because I was going to have a heart attack. I thought it was the end of my career. It was just, because everything was live in those days, but they were taping this, and here's what happened. Be careful. Oh, yeah! to say there's a naked girl at the door you just didn't do that in those days i mean you just didn't do it the fact is when i got through and the show was still going on live i went back up i was uh, uh, just hysterical because what do you say on that you can't say hey folks there's a naked girl back there <laughs> <laughs> well, all I know is the music was playing. And, uh... I could see the monitor over on the left and back, and I saw her on it, but they had just patched that in so I could see it. Naturally, it scared me to death, really. It was just a shock to see you. Know, how many times you open the door and see a naked girl? Well, she is good. <laughs> and, uh, no, right now, uh, let's have a couple of commercials. <laughs> but what was wrong when I walked back out, there were no guys manning the cameras, and there were no stagehands, and nobody, they were all in the back with the cameras taking photo flash pictures of the girl. And I mean, I said, well, that's really ridiculous. I got two eight by 10s myself. <laughs>
Fort Worth. Now, for the very first time, here is what Soupy really saw. Oh, no! <laughs> well, it's almost what Soupy saw. We'll be right back. Starting today, there's something new under the shower. New Liquifor lets you shower your body and face with skin care. It's a silky, rich liquid that replaces bar soap. Shower yourself with skin care. No bar soap has this formula of four special skin care ingredients. A deep cleanser, a smoother, a conditioner, and a moisturizer. A rich formula you just can't get in bar soap. Starting today, it feels soft and silky all over. New Liquifor. From the depths of space, from the edge of the earth, Timex takes quartz to make a watch beyond time as we know it. The Timex quartz, quartz for every woman, in the newest elegance. So accurate, you may have to reset it only once this year. Thin, sleek, beautiful, the Timex quartz, built and priced in the Timex tradition. Timex, we make technology beautiful. Tomorrow's really special. First, want to learn the secret of being a sex symbol? Watch Bernadette Peters, John Schneider, Linda Evans, and George Burns. How'd he get in there? Wasn't easy. Had to work nights. Then Loretta Lynn takes New York by storm with Judd Hirsch, Debbie Allen, Conway Twitty, and the cast of 42nd Street. Two great specials tomorrow. Well, that's it for the fourth edition of TV Censored Bloopers, and I'm very, very happy to announce because of you, we are going to be back again with TV Censored Bloopers number five. Yay! How about that? I'd like to thank all of our guests for sharing in the fun tonight. You know, there's a song from the Broadway show, A Chorus Line. I think it's, uh, well, what's the title of it? What I Did for Love. And that pretty much sums up the feeling that we get from all of the stars and the news people and the prop men and the folks behind the scenes who've been so very, very generous. They've allowed us to laugh along with some wonderful, unexpected bloopers. There's no doubt about it. They did so with love. We thank them. We thank you. For tonight, Dick Clark. Good night. Now stay tuned as Ed McMahon and Marriott Hartley host the all-new television's greatest commercials. They'll make you sing and break you up. They're the biggest little spectaculars in the world. 30 years of the jingles you hummed and the jokes you laughed at. With stars you never expected to see doing commercials. Next on NBC.